Welcome to Life, Lessons, and Laughter with your host, Glenn Ambrose. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Life, Lessons, and Laughter. Ben Barber, please join us. Hi, everybody. So here we are with Life, Lessons, and Laughter discussing a very important topic. Yeah. And today, like we can come at this a lot of different ways, but today we're coming at it from the way of, um, you know, there's, there's a saying that the, the end justifies the means. And we're going to explore how that is not true and <laughs> at all and how the means are everything. And if we take care of the means, the ends will work themselves out. So that's what we're going to do today. Care to join me, Ben, and do that with me? I I will care to join you, and I'll care to join Faith as well. Uh, your dog, who I uh, just heard in the background, and, and she is amazing. Um, so, uh, yeah, explain, explain this, explain you, what are you, what do you mean by, uh, the means are everything? Yeah. What she do? I'm going to, I'm going to come here, Faith. I'm going to take Faith's collar off and then we can get into it. So I don't hear that jingle jangling the whole it's time. It's very Thank nice you. though. It's very Christmassy. It's uh, very you know? <laughs> yeah. So everybody watching the video, here's, here's Faith. Oh, she's amazing. Uh, She's the best. So, um, so yeah. So the, I mean, it's we we get caught up in the outcome a lot of times. So a lot of times, this is approached from that it, basically spiritual law that we have to be unattached to the outcome because it's it's not you know we're we're seeing this we're rationalizing away a lot of poor behaviors and we complicate things and it's because we're we're trying to achieve a specific long-term goal you know and we go oh that goal is very important it's very important you know like so for an example like we could be like okay well we need to feed the homeless okay well we need to feed the homeless and that's a good cause and that's very good so people will literally go around misrepresenting themselves, lying, um, perhaps stealing food, doing whatever it takes, uh, treating other people poorly, and all in the name of doing something good. And we've done that with, <laughs> with kind of everything. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like it's more important to feel like we're, we're accomplishing good than to take responsibility for what we are doing. And it's, you know, this is what complicates life. It's like life is supposed to be very, very simple. If we just walked around and, and said like, well, you're not supposed to lie. You know, like the 10 commandments, there's no if at the end of each one. <laughs> you know, it doesn't say thou shall not kill unless there's a specific circumstance and you feel righteous and this person's really bad and you don't like them and they did 14 things to you before. Like there, there isn't that, you know, there isn't that if after. And this is why we get so complicated. Things get so complicated and we start getting lost in the details of everything. Just don't kill people. Just don't lie. You know, most people hopefully can handle the don't kill people part, but, but, our, uh, but our government can't, you know, like, <laughs> nor can most of the governments around the world, you know, like, so it, because they rationalize it. And, and then we wonder why we can't figure out global problems. It's because we've complicated them. You know, like if we just went and said, let's not kill each other. Just let's let's just we don't do that. We don't kill each other. That's it. Well, then maybe things might be start heading a little different. And I'm not saying that we can snap our fingers and do that tomorrow, you know, because that's the you know, I've, I've heard that six gazillion times over the years. Yeah. But so what are you telling us that uh, we're, we're just going to 
you know, not defend ourselves, then every outlaw is going to come over and attack us. And I, I understand we're, we're changing a, a, an ocean liner here. You know, <laughs> this is going to, we're, we're going from a completely dysfunctional way of being into a functional way of being. So this isn't going to happen over a weekend. You know, it's going to take years. And, and the point is, is like, we are a microcosm of the macrocosm. So if you look at why it's okay for our government to be at war all the time, it's because it's acceptable to the people who live in that country. So if we as a people just started changing inside and going, you know what? Like, I don't think this is right. Like, I, I just don't think we should kill people. Yeah, but you don't understand it. No, no, I just... I just don't think we should kill people, you know, and we just started leaning in a direction of these things. It's it's the what we need to do is very, very simple. And like I said, so I was watching football yesterday because yesterday was Sunday. And I noticed that the NFL had these huge promotions for like I'm, I'm in the mode, man. I am questioning everything right now. So I, my brain is on high alert for anything. So I'm watching this. Uh, the NFL is telling me how how wonderful they are, of course, and how they support men and women of the military and how I believe it was forty one million dollars. But I could be wrong in the figure, but it was a large sum of money that they were putting towards these foundations to, in support of the military. And I'm thinking like I'm questioning everything. You know, I'm in that mode. So I'm like. Why does the NFL have to put $41 million towards our military? Don't we have like a trillion dollar military budget? And it's kind of like, don't we pay taxes and stuff for our military? Why, why does the NFL have to support our military? And, you know, it's the Wounded Veterans Fund was one of them. And there were a couple others that they, they were supporting. And I'm like, see, this is a problem. Like we are so not questioning everything and we're so not keeping things simple that things go right under the radar because they sound good. Hey, we should support men and we, we should create a wounded veterans fund and we should all support them as a community. Now, that sounds like a wonderful idea, you know, so we do it. But nobody stops and goes, well, wait a minute. How come the the government that we pay trillions of dollars a year in taxes for and is causing all these wars and is making the decision to go to war and is sending all these people over to war and they're coming back wounded and the government isn't taking care of them that's not okay like that is not okay if if you are sending your citizens to war and you don't take care of them when they come back that's fundamentally wrong you know, it, so so it needs, but this is the stuff we just we we you know oh well that's just how it is, and so we'll go create an organization to fund what the government is supposed to be funding. This is the type of thing, and our whole society is like this. I think this is why we're getting so confused, is because life is so complicated that it can be as clear as the nose on your face, and we don't even recognize it anymore. <laughs> You know, it's just completely acceptable. It's like, so we need to simplify and just go back. You know, it's, I heard somebody say this many years ago and I don't remember who it was, but it was just, they were talking about Jesus. And they said, you know, if Jesus came back tomorrow, I have a feeling he would just go, ah, oh, man. <laughs> oh, guys. Oh, oh, you missed it. You missed it, guys. You know, really impressed with all the churches and the, you know, the 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 gold buildings and uh, and all the dogma and the kneeling and the standing and the praying and uh, you know, wow, like you guys really dove into this knee deep. Like you guys are in, um, cool. Appreciate your uh, enthusiasm, but you missed it. <laughs> it was just love. That's all. That's all I was saying. I was just saying love one another. That's it. If it doesn't fit through the window of love, 
then just don't do it. Just go, oh, no, my bad. We got it. We're, that doesn't work. We'll have to find another avenue. And, you know, that's what I'm talking about. It's just simplifying things and just going, if, if, if somebody lies and rips you off because of their lies, that, that does not give you the right to lie back. If you lie after somebody lies to you, then you are a liar. Just because you lied. It's a, there's, <laughs> it's a, a liar is one who lies. It's not a, one who lies with really good reason if somebody lied exactly 3.6 times first about something important, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's just so if, if we start simplifying and going, you know, what type of person do I want to be? This is what I'm getting at. What type of person do I want to be? Do I want to be honest? Then don't lie. When somebody says, do you want to come over next weekend for a party? Don't tell them yes. When you know that you have no interest in going over there, you can tell them the truth. We're, we're so used to lying and it's such a embedded in, into our society that like I, I was a fairly honest person before I woke up. With everyone but myself. I, I lied to myself <laughs> tremendously. Like, I mean, I rationalized my behavior. I was amazing at it. But like, I believed my own BS. So like, technically, I was generally externally a, a um, very honest person for the most part. I didn't really lie. But it took me over a year to figure out how to not lie once I woke up. And and that's coming from a pretty honest person. But I noticed all the little ones, all the white lies, all the times I wasn't, you know, when somebody would invite me somewhere and I had no intention of going and it was just easier to say a white lie. And all those little things, I, it took me a while to learn that I could keep my mouth shut and not say some things or just be honest with people. And they would actually, they might not like it, but they'd respect me more. And the people who didn't respect my honesty didn't respect me anyway. So I, don't, I didn't really need them in my life. So the, the people who got angry, and I'm not talking about brutal honesty, jamming. I had to learn the difference between that too. You don't have to jam stuff down somebody's throat that is unnecessary. We can be kind and courteous too. But um, people who didn't like just my you know, plain honesty that I, my life was no worse for them being out of it. <laughs> you know? It was fine. So, yeah. So the other title of this is simplify. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think that uh, what's, what's interesting is that I, I feel like there's been a theme this year, um, at least the last six months on these podcasts, which has been slow down. Yeah. Simplify. Mm. And don't be obsessed with the outcome. Yeah, I right? agree with you. Those are like the tenets of this will be 2021 by the time anybody's hearing this, but those were like the tenets of 2020 that in, in all of these podcast recordings, slow down. Uh, what was the second one that I slow down, simplify, don't be obsessed with the outcome. Right. Yeah. And that's, you know, it's getting back to the basics. It's, you know, as soon as this pandemic started, the first thing I did was like, oh, what's, you know, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> what am I supposed to do from a spiritual perspective? You know? And the first thing I got was go within, you know, go within, just go within, just sit in silence, connect, go within. So I did. And as I did that more than I normally do, I got clarity and, and this is the same, you know, last February or whatever, when I'm talking about now of 2020, as it was every other time in the last 17 years, that something big was going off either collectively or in my own life, or, if, uh, you know, I was feeling like crap. It's always, they teach us in recovery. It's get back to the basics. It's always back to the basics. Life is not complicated. We make it complicated. And the more complicated it is, the harder it is to figure out. So get back to the basics. Get back to the basics. And what you just said is the basics. And I think if 2020 has taught us anything, it's 
you know, how important those basics are. I mean, it, like if you're not, if you're not simplifying your life and, and like getting back to what you find is, finding out what you think is important, what's important to you and doing the inner work, which is not easy, but it's always simple. If you're not going back to that, doing something simple, then you're suffering, you know, and that's what 2020 is doing. It's, it, it's either an opportunity or, or you know, it's, it's a wipeout <laughs> or it's immense suffering. So yeah, it's getting back to the basics and, and we have to be unattached to the outcome because we don't know what it is. We have no control over it anyway. And it's, and it's not about the outcome anyway. Like if, if <laughs> hypothetically, like, okay, so I've been awake for 17 years, right? More than 17 years. I've been, you should, you should probably take a nap, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I, but I'm boom. So I've been actively helping people just about basically that whole time. Um, if my, if I have an attachment to the outcome, I should really stop doing this podcast and just trash my business. Be I mean, really, because I mean, you know, have I made a dent in the, in the globe, the global issues? No, not really. I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying that I haven't helped people. What I'm saying is if I have an attachment to the outcome, the problem, the problem that I'm helping with is global. And it's been on this planet for millions of years. So like, I, I, I'm just, I can't like walk out my door and see society getting better by what I'm doing. So I might as well just fold up shop and just call it a day, you know, but I'm not attached to the outcome because I don't know if I'm going to see the outcome. I don't, I don't know if I'll ever be able to draw a straight line from what I did and how society got better. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if Tony Robbins can do that. I don't know if Eckhart Tolle can do that. Like I could do that for them because they're so much bigger <laughs> than, than I am. They've reached so many more people. Like I could be like, guys, guys, no, look, <laughs> like, you know, look at how you're influencing things. I could probably do it with somebody like that, but I couldn't do it for myself. You know, maybe they can't do it for themselves. Who knows? But that's it's it's not the point. It's, you know, that if any of us focus on the outcome, we're going to get discouraged with a problem this big. So therefore, we're not supposed to be doing it. You know, we're supposed to be focusing on what we do and and acquiring fulfillment in what we do while we do it, which brings us right back to the end, to the means. It's the means that are important. I feel fulfilled in this moment as I'm talking about stuff. That's what my fulfillment is. So my means is in alignment with what I'm supposed to be doing, with who I am, with my authenticity. I'm not, you know, I'm not going, I'm not doing anything against my authentic self right now. So it feels good. And that's my means. Now, if I help, a billion people and the world starts to shift because little old Glenn Ambrose, yippee ki yay, man. If I help a million people and it's, it, I can't draw, ever draw a straight line to it, that's cool too. Like it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't matter. I'm just doing it and I'm feeling good while I'm doing it. And the, the end will take care of itself, uh, whatever that's supposed to look like. Yeah. Uh, so going back to, going back to, um, you know, the ends justifying the means, uh, situation, um, the, you know, it's a lot of people don't, you know, that, that, they they do they live by what I just said, which was the ends justify the means, right? Which is the that is the saying that we all know. But what what you are saying, the the whole premise of this episode is that it's all about the means, that the ends will figure themselves out. Um, and I just it's it's you know the way that we do things is so important, 
and selling that short for um selling that short for an outcome that you want is like what is it all for you know what i mean like if you don't do the th if if you don't do the thing right and and you get the end result for the wrong reasons then then it's not the thing that you wanted it to be in the first place right right and it's you know that's just hard for people to swallow they don't get it i mean we are so addicted the reason that we can live like this so unconsciously on such a grand scale is because people literally don't understand that happiness comes from within it's they just don't they, you know and we can say we hell i need to remind myself of it all the time <laughs> and i truly believe it but it's you know it's it's in our society it's so against that that it's 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 hard to function from it and we are so emotional it, we, see we get attached to our emotions we make decisions from our emotions and our just and our emotions are not there to make decisions like that's a horrible reason to make decisions we can make decisions by our feelings like how we feel about something that's intuition that's not emotion is difference you know but we make you know like the you know i'll just take a, a a custody situation i mean it doesn't get much more emotional than that so one person can can say okay it's best for my child if they stay with me and the other person says no it's best if the child stays with me now they both truly believe it because they're coming at it from different perspectives and the problem is, is that if one of them decides that, you know, it's where it doesn't matter, I will lie, cheat, steal and do whatever it takes to get my kid staying with me because because this other person's a jerk and it's going to screw up my kid. Like, that's how we rationalize things. And what like we, we think we think we can shelter our kids from things and we technically we really can't. Because we think like if our kid sees us argue or or behave poorly or something like that, or is exposed to a divorce or dysfunction of some level, you know, we're like, oh my God, I screwed up my kids. No, you didn't. You didn't. Of course, you don't want to intentionally jam dysfunction in their face. But when they see it, it's not that big of a deal, really. It's how you handle it. Because there is, if you haven't noticed, we live in a very dysfunctional world. <laughs> you know, so it's everywhere. So your kid is going to see dysfunction. And it's a matter of teaching them how to deal with it. And the other aspect is, is things are vibrational. Like we are vibrational beings and we think that like if our kid doesn't see us lie, cheat and steal, then they'll be fine. No, man, you're vibrating at a liar, a cheater and a thief. That is, you can't control that. You are one who does those things and your vibrational footprint or thumbprint says it. And that kid is around it all the time if they don't even see it. And then they're going to like, let's just say for the sake of argument, I'll, you know, use, use um, like society. Um, I don't know. I can't think of the word, but just common things in society that people think are true. So to, to make for an example. So like you can take a father that's running around and cheating on his wife and lying and stealing and doing all these things, but he doesn't let his daughter see it, right? His daughter's going to grow up. She's a teenager. She's going to meet five guys and the first four, she's going to go, they're cute. And the fifth one, she's going to go, I got to have him. And she's not going to know why. She's not going to know what it is. She's not going to know why she's attracted to him. It's that intangible that we all have. And she's going to go straight for that guy. And you want to know what that guy's going to be doing? He's going to be vibrating at liar, cheater, and thief. Guaranteed. It's going to happen. It happens all the time, you know? And I mean, you know, I mean, people can, people can learn from it and stuff like that. And it doesn't have to drag them down their whole lives. But, but I mean, that's what happens. We are vibrational beings. And when we are around somebody 
in our developmental years that is vibrating at a certain rate, that just feels normal to us. It feels comfortable. It feels familiar. We don't have to like it. You know, we don't have to like, we can't, we, we can be like, I'm never going to be like my parents. Good luck. <laughs> God, I mean, I was the king of that fan club, man. I was a president. Like, I'm never going to be like my parents. Wrong. <laughs> I turned out very similar to them in a lot of ways, you know? But so so we we have to, it's, there is no end that justifies the means. We have to stop with this rationalization stuff and start living. We have to start being the change we wish to see in the world. If we are, if we would like to live in a society where people are honest we need to start being honest ourselves you know and it, there's an art to it like when you start learning like you know like i don't run around showing everybody my cards <laughs> but you know like that, that that's not honest that's foolish you know there's a difference so i mean but we we do have to start being the change we we wish to see if you want to see certain values in society then start being them in every way shape and form you can in your own life and you'll see the people around you start reflecting it and your world says like this society society hasn't changed like i was saying society hasn't changed much in the last 17 years um you know and i mean of course i could go off on a list of ways it has but but just to stay with the point i'm making yeah it hasn't changed a lot in the last 17 years but my world has because I changed. Before that, I mean, I totally believed that most people stole. Like it always used to make me laugh when I was sponsoring alcoholics and addicts. And like they they they'd be doing their their resentment list. And there was <laughs> it was almost like most people smoked pot if they had at some point, you know, when they had an addiction problem. So there was almost every time there was at least one, usually multiple little lines on there that said somebody pinched some weed out of their bag and, and they were resentful towards this person. And I always used to laugh at that one because I'm like, that's what people who smoke weed and drink and do drugs do, man. Like that's expected. Like everybody pinches weed, man. Like, did you pinch weed? Yeah. Okay. That's because everybody does it. When you're in a group of people who are, who pinch weed and then you get surprised when somebody pinches your weed, like that, that's just, that's the people you're surrounding yourself with. That's the scenario you're in. I don't know what this term means. Pinching weed. Yeah. It's just taking a little bit of somebody's weed. All right. Like you go to a, you go to a bathroom, you know, and you leave your bag of weed on the table, you come back and somebody stole enough to make a couple joints out of or something like it happens, you know, you notice it later, whatever. <laughs> so yeah. It, so maybe that was a bad example. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I got it from context. I just had never heard that before. Yeah. Well, um, that, I'm, I'm quite a bit older than you. So maybe that's, maybe it's a generational term also has not been my, uh, well, yeah, you're not a big pothead either. I'm so. not, yeah, not my experience. Um, nah. so, but the, yeah. So like, yeah, well, when you're around those things and then you, you, you know, that's what you should expect. For yeah. Sure. I mean, when you're like, when I, when I right after I got sober, I moved up to Rhode Island. I was at my aunt and uncle's house watching a movie and all completely relaxed. And my uncle went to the bathroom that was off the behind me off the room. And he comes back and he puts his hand on my shoulder and I jumped. And he just left his hand there and he goes, you're safe now. And I just relaxed. And, you know, that happened 16 years ago. And I still remember it because it was a pivotal point. It, it was meaningful. I don't know. I know he knew what he was talking about because it was too perfect and his energy was too right. But I don't know that it, he knew it had such a profound effect on me because he was he he helped me. You know, that moment helped me transition It helped me gain clarity and transition to the life that I had lived in for so many years and the life I was about to embark on now. You know, and he told me, he was like, you know, we, we've been waiting. 
The whole family has been waiting. Your friends have been waiting. You know, we've been waiting for years. Like this was a different conversation. And I said, waiting for what? He goes, you know, the call. And I'm like, huh? he goes, the call that you're dead. And I was like, oh, he's like, yeah, it was, we were just waiting. It wasn't a matter of if, it was just when, you know? And I was like, wow, that must've been hard for you guys. You know? No, I didn't know that you guys were just sitting around waiting, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, but when you're, so it affects, it, it, it ripple effects. You know, my life was a representation of what that looked like. I, there was a good chance I was going to end up dead. And I wasn't living specific, like I was just drinking a lot. Like I wasn't doing like, um, when I was younger, I was crazy, crazy. When I was like late twenties and early thirties, I wasn't crazy, crazy. I mean, but I could have gotten killed in a bar fight real easy. God knows many people wanted to, <laughs> you know, but like in the last 17 years, I haven't been in one fight. I haven't been, you know, why? Because, and so the life I live literally has changed. My perspective has changed. The people around me have changed. The way I interact with people has changed. So what, what they expect from me has changed. How, uh, how they respect me has changed, you know, and how I respect others has changed and everything. And my experience on a day-to-day -day basis on this planet earth has literally changed night and day compared to what it was before, because I took care of, because I focus on my means, not, not the end, you know, because I have no control over the end. So that's something I learned. So it's, it's just, I'm, I'm the change that I wish to see to the best of my ability and I'm not perfect at it, but you know, it's, we have to, we have to start expecting more. It's the only uh, out of each other, out of ourselves and out of each other. And then that can mushroom and we can actually live in a different society. This is we're recording this right after election. Of 2020. And I think now that it's over, you know, who, they're probably going to fight and argue for another six months or a year or whatever, but whatever, <laughs> you know, for, uh, for all intensive purposes, uh, um, it, we'll assume at this point that the election's over. Um, I think this is an appropriate to time to use that as an example. Like the, the, there is to look at either one of the two candidates and say, if you had a choice, that is the person you would have representing you. If you truly believe that, you are completely brainwashed out of your flipping mind and please don't listen to me anymore or listen to me 24 seven. You need it. Um, no, that, I mean, it is literally factually proven that both of these men lie consistently and, and they are not the exception to the rule. Every just most people in politics at least when you get up to a federal level, lie, cheat, and steal on a regular basis. Fact. And if you don't believe that's true, please start doing some research because you are full of crap. It's a fact that they do. And as a society, we accept it. And that is, that's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that we actually, we don't expect more from our leaders. I find it appalling. And, you know, that it's, and that's what we, we don't need to get appalled. What we need to do is just be the change, you know, like I can sit here for another 45 minutes and tell you how pissed off I am about how that's the case. And it doesn't matter. It just is. And, you know, I thought everybody knew this. I thought everybody figured this out, you know, back in the sixties, the latest, you know, with Vietnam and, and, you know, all the stuff going on back then. I thought we sh Watergate. I thought we shined a light uh, enough where people actually knew politicians and politics were corrupt. Apparently, we didn't. So it is, and we should change that. But the only way we are going to change that is if we collectively change ourselves, and that is going to. We have to if we if we are going to have hope in this world. I think we need to believe in in the collective power. 
the collective power of love. When when the uh, Jimi Hendrix, I believe, when the the power of love overcomes the love of power, then we will know peace. And that's the truth. So we 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 have to be the power of love. We have to be love. And the way we be love is when we embody loving principles. And those loving principles, the eternal principles are, you know, things like love and peace and honesty and kindness and compassion. If we just be those things and you can be the seed that shows somebody else that there's another way to be. And then they can show somebody else that there's another way to be. And, and it feels really good. So, so it spreads like wildfire, man. We can actually do this. And as we are slowly start making up, st stop pointing the finger at the people at the top and, and understanding that they're, they are just uh, uh, an example of the collective. So we have to stop thinking that we're good people. Like I do more work on myself than most people that I know. And I'm probably the one that says that I screw up more than most people I know. <laughs> I screw up. I'm not perfect at this. I say it over and over and over because it's true, but I try. And I know for a fact that I'm more honest than most people. <laughs> uh, so it's stop patting ourselves on the back for ego's sake and just be the principles that we're talking about. Just be it. Simplify it. Just be honest. Just be kind. Even when it's hard, you know, and the better we get at that, I'm telling you, this is what can change the world and we can do it. We have to stop focusing on the end and rationalizing our behavior and just to take responsibility for our own behavior and, and be that change. So I think that's the end of my rant. <laughs> and uh, breathe. So, yes, please breathe. And if you guys want uh, more Glenn Ambrose, then uh, if you have any questions, you can send him a message on whatever platform it is that you are listening to this, and Glenn will get it. Uh, or you can um, click the links in the description wherever you are uh, doing this or click his profile. All of the old podcast episodes um the ask glenn anything live show you can join us live on thursdays at 6 p.m um across glenn's social media and uh you know all of that stuff so check that out um glenn anything else you want to say about on the on the flippity flip i do not i think this is it i think it's just you know just simplify and just really be the person you want to be in the tiniest of ways little by little and and just know that i mean your self-love i guarantee you your self-love will expand tremendously doing that and you're going to like who you are you're going to like your 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 personal circle um better and you're going to be a change for good in this world so um just do it to the best of your ability and uh there's lots of people already out there starting to do this, and we just need more. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you soon. Glenn is available for life coaching sessions. To book an appointment or for more information, go to glennambrose.com, follow him on Facebook and Twitter, or click the link in the description of this episode.